I know I'm going to receive a lot of death threats from the fanbase after these next three videos. You know, after the four years after it has been announced, I may have referenced the fact that I'm not too keen on the Big World Big Adventure series. Are you fucking kidding me? Thomas and his friends finally leave Sodor to work in the real world. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Are the people at Mattel Creations just blind to negative criticism or something? No one was complaining about the amount of male characters here in the UK, so why did they even bother with it? Yay, Thomas is abandoning his duties to travel around the world for no reason. I wasn't being sarcastic on that last line, by the way. The trailers and sneak peeks don't look good at all, the animation is cartoony as hell, and the realism is clearly flushed down the sewers. James, what are you doing? Drowning myself. Though I can't say when my journey will be complete. But don't you know, Twilight? The journey never ends. You know, at least Starswell has a logical reason to go around the world, unlike Douchey Mech abandon his duties without thinking here. Always tell your folks where you're going and when you'll be back. Bad things can happen if you don't. Yeah, take the hint, Thomas! Sorry, that just really pisses me off. <laughs> I already knew this was going to be the worst thing ever. I mean, what the hell made these talented, amazing people who made amazing work in the past five years, or the previous year for a matter of fact, come up with an idea so random, unnecessary, and completely nonsensical? After watching this movie, I really want it to be worse than those two movies. Why is it this sort of thing bothers me in stuff like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Dora the Explorer, and Thomas Season 22? But but unlike a certain other show that soon decides to shoehorn in international elements for no reason whatsoever. Ah yes, back when Thomas the Tank Engine was actually enjoyable to watch. And it had effort put into it. <sighs> I swear I wouldn't talk about this movie again. I'm not going to talk about the new series again. I don't want commenters complaining again. Paddington's worldwide adventures are miles better than when Thomas did it. Paddington Bear is a more timeless and more suitable character to have worldwide adventures than Thomas. This is stupid! This whole movie is stupid! There is nothing good about it! This is just awful! Yeah, I've been really subtle about it. We have now arrived at the Big World Big Adventures era of the show. The most controversial, divisive, and questionable era in the show's history. The majority of the fandom agrees that this is one of the worst eras of the show, while the rest of it have hopeful, positive mindsets and think that the series is... Okay at worst, but pretty good at best. <sighs> I know people are entitled to their own opinion, but this one is just... baffling. The whole reason this controversial rebrand exists in the first place was because Mattel wanted to make the show more suitable for the 2010s. For example, they have added in more female characters into the main cast to make it more gender balanced. They started adding in diverse characters into the show, 
putting diverse in quotes. And half of the episodes in these new seasons are about Thomas visiting railways from different countries around the world. The reason for this inclusion in particular is because of a child the producers just randomly met somewhere telling them trains can go places, but Thomas never goes anywhere. What kind of kid says that? Can you honestly imagine a millennial six-year-old saying something that critical and deep? And no, I'm not insulting the child who said that quote. That is the intended age group for the current show. It is shown on Milkshake alongside Paw Patrol, Fireman Sam, and Peppa Pig for crying out loud. Now... When I first heard about these changes back in 2018, I thought this was the worst direction they would have ever taken for the show. And right after, they had done so unbelievably well with it. And even back then, I knew that this series was going to suck. I had seen Season 21 and Journey Beyond Sodor, and there were obvious slipbacks in the logic and the writing. And in the end... I was right for assuming the worst, because this was the worst way they could have possibly executed these ideas. All of these crazy ideas are not entirely impossible to achieve, and it can be done really well if they had given themselves a bit more time to think about the characters, the story, and logical in-universe reasons for these changes. Even though the international stuff was in production since at least 2016, when season 20 was airing. What the hell happened? Now, let's go over all of these new changes and see why they don't work, shall we? The first one on the list is making half of every season have Thomas going all around the world and visiting railways from other countries. You know... I actually think this idea wouldn't actually had been that bad if these episodes took place during the Big World Big Adventures movie. But no, they apparently take place after the movie, since Nia isn't tagging along with him. I still don't understand why Thomas would go all over the world again if he has already done it by the end of the movie. It would have been a lot more sensical and logical if all of the international episodes in the Boaba seasons took place during the events of the movie and the Sodo episodes take place while he is away. Maybe the Fat Controller brought Rebecca onto the railway to do Thomas's work on his branch line while he's away. Or maybe he does Rosie's work while Rosie works on the branch line or something. That would have been a good use of female representation. But instead, they all take place after the movie. And what's even better, almost none of these episodes are mentioned in any of the Sodor episodes. If the episodes or the malls in them are not going to be referenced in the Sodor episodes, then what's even the point of watching them? When I was in India, I came off the rails and an elephant helped me back onto the tracks. But besides Trusty Trunky and maybe one or two other episodes from seasons 23 and 24 that I don't know about, all of the international episodes are completely pointless. As for all of the international characters, Shane, Isla, Tamika, Aubrey and Aiden, Yong Bao, Hong Mei, Lei, An An and Yinglong, Ashima, Shankar, Naja Han and Rajiv, they are either one-dimensional, not interesting, don't have much to display, or are just carbon copies of Sodor characters. An An and Ying Long like what Annie and Clarabelle don't like. Shankar is stern and stands no nonsense. Kinda like Duck, Rajiv is just an Indian James. As if one of them was bad enough, now we've got two of them. Tamika just looks like a female Duncan and just cares deeply about the rainforest. Even though she's a machine that is possibly polluting it with her coal and steam, but 
Whatever. Shane is a jokester, Hong Mei is fast, Yong Bao is a master type figure, and the rest are just... there. The next big change they have made to the show is by removing Edward and Henry from the main cast just so that they could add in some more female characters into the show. One of them being from a foreign country because there have been reporters complaining that there isn't enough female representation or even diversity into the main cast or in the show as a whole. What episodes have these reporters been watching? If any, if these reporters had done any form of research on the show, one of the main things you do when writing a news article or reporting to a company, they would see that in the Brenner era, not too long before these changes, there were loads of female characters. Some of them have lead roles in a few episodes. <laughs> Emily, Annie, Clarabelle, Millie, Caitlin, Belle, Mavis, Rosie, Marion, Henrietta, a female slip coach, Judy, Daisy, Ashima, Frida, Gina, Lexi, Frankie, Hannah, and Carly. Not to mention plenty of others in the model series. Did they seriously not watch a single episode with any of these gals in them? Or did they just make this report only after seeing promotional pictures and all of the merchandise in the shops? Mattel is really going to answer to those people, aren't they? And it's really sad that they had to get rid of Edward and Henry to make way for these new females. Two popular fan favorite characters who have been in the franchise literally since the very beginning have now been reduced to minor characters with really tiny roles or used as background cameos and aren't even given much dialogue at all. The Steamworks is pretty hot, sir. Quiet, Henry. I'm trying to think. Well, actually, Edward did get a few big roles in episodes like Hunt the Truck and Emily's Best Friend later on, and at least we saw him leave Tidmouth Shed at the end of season 21 and had a reason for doing so. It is a logical reason, but the execution should have been better handled. Philip was never associated with Wellsworth! But Henry was obviously a character the production team really didn't care for. He didn't get anywhere near the amount of big-ish roles Edward got. He was given less dialogue than him, and his reason for leaving Tidmouth was so awful. Well, that was because Henry wasn't going to leave Tidmouth in the first place, but they rushed him out because they forced Nia into the main cast, all because of diversity. But still, Henry's departure clearly needed more reason and care put into it. Why does he want to sleep in Vickerstown now? What is he hoping to do there? Why would he sleep with Rosie if these two had never interacted before? Is there ever an episode, or at least a scene, where he works with Rosie? Or establishes a friendship with her? Or speaks to her? Nope. Henry just says one line of dialogue, and he's gone. Such a nice send-off to one of the oldest characters in the franchise, am I right? And what do I think of the characters that replace them? Rebecca is... okay... Ish. Apart from her completely red buffers, her design is alright, and Rachel Miller does such a cute voice role for her. She makes her sound like a charming sweetheart. Whoopsie! Off I go again! I don't want to be late on my first day. Sorry! Diesel, I think you'll find. I'll be out of your way just as quick as I can. But in terms of her character, she's a bit confusing. In her debut, she wants to be just as good at her work as the other engines, but messes up. Doesn't every new engine have that mindset? And then, in what Rebecca does, she thinks that she isn't special because she's just a normal steam engine. There's nothing special about me. What do I do? 
Who am I? I'm just a steamy. A steamy among steamies. The Fat Controller had been comparing you to Gordon, who is fast, strong, and pulls the express, something not many engines have the strength to do. That sounds pretty special to me. But then, this is what Marion says is special about her. And I think you do something that none of the other engines do. You see the best in everyone. Literally no other of the hundreds of engines on Sodor sees the positive side of things. Don't Thomas or Percy do that sometimes? And outside of this episode, Rebecca only did that one other time, at the end of Confusion Without Delay. An engine with no need for coaches? <gasps> How brilliant is that? That's what I mean, Rebecca! You made Daisy feel good about herself! But that's something Daisy boasts about all the time. Highly sprung, right up to date, thoroughly modern and stuff. Rebecca isn't really that bad of a character per se. I just don't think Rebecca is good enough or has enough potential to be a main character. These sorts of stories are fine, but they are stories more suitable for side characters like Ryan, Glynn, Harvey, Skiff and etc. Which I assume Rebecca was originally going to be before she became a Steam Team member in Season 22. Speaking of which, her reason for moving into Tidmouth Shed is just as poorly thought out as Henry's reason for moving out of Tidmouth Shed. So, what was Rebecca's reason for even being here? Rebecca's going to be staying with you at Tidmouth Sheds and helping Gordon during busy times. What? When has Gordon ever needed help with the Express? There were no signs of him struggling with the heavy train, or busy schedules, or more passengers than ever, or showing signs of his age, or anything. He's still as strong and capable as he always was. And Rebecca is just thrown into the main character hub of Tidmouth Sheds in the same episode she is introduced in. Emily was given a few episodes in Season 7 of us getting to know her and her personality before becoming a main character in Season 8 where we got to see more of her changed personality, and then she moves into the newly refurbished Tidmouth Sheds just before Season 9. And while I think Nia's inclusion is a bit rushed as well, at least they gave her clear enough signs of her personality and a major role in the movie right before she joined the Steam Team. But they introduce Rebecca for 30 seconds with no clear enough signs of a personality, and then she moves into Tidmouth Shed as if Henry never existed. What they were going to do with her in Season 21 looks like a step in the better direction. Introduce Rebecca as a new character, on the same level as Hugo or Philip was, have two episodes with her as the lead, sleeping at Vicar's Town for the time being or something, and then in Season 22, she moves into Tidmouth for some good deed, maybe the events of Gordon and Rebecca coming through, and then she becomes a new main. That would have been much better for Rebecca's character than just throwing her in there just because we need another female. And Nia? Well, this is where my opinions get really tricky to explain. I know change can be hard, Gordon. Almost everything in my life has changed. I'm in a new country, on a new railway, trying to make new friends. And all my old friends are much farther away than Henry and Edward are going to be. My old friends are still my friends. Okay, I do understand that there are people in real life who have been through the same thing Nia has been through, moving from their native countries to live in England or somewhere. But the problem is that these people usually have a good reason for moving, but Nia has none. In the movie, she first says that she has always wanted to see the world. She has seen the world now. Does she go back to Africa afterwards? No, she then says that her shed in Africa is gone and that she has no shed to sleep in anymore. 
I'm so sorry if this sounds offensive, but... That's it? That's your entire reason for leaving? Oh, it's not because she has been treated horribly over in Kenya, or because she has less and less work to do, or she doesn't have any friends over there, which definitely isn't the case if Kwaku is to be believed, and they don't even give her a definitive role when she's on Sodor. You know, like how Ryan and Daisy work on the Harwick branch line, or what Mavis works at the quarry. You know, that sort of thing. First, Nia is shunting trains for the big engines at Nabford. Then she takes Annie and Clarabelle along the main line. For some reason. Then she's working with Edward at Brendam Docks. I don't understand. In counting on Nia, they keep saying that she's a clever engine. Can solve many problems and stuff. But then we get... This. But I'll never be a really useful engine if I don't know numbers. I can count, all right? One, two, three, four, five. And I know that there are three birds on that branch over there. But I can't read those squiggles that people call numbers. Again, this is really relatable for the people Nia is aiming for. They can struggle to recognize English letters, words, and numbers. And teaching Nia these visual letters, words, and numbers does seem like a good idea. But the way they executed it, it looks like a children's educational video on YouTube. It could have been done better. It is also said in the opening monologue that Nia already knows the names of all the stations. She's good at finding her way around Sodor, and she knows the names of all the stations. Even though she hasn't been on Sodor for very long, and aren't English words, letters, and names just as hard for someone like Nia to grasp on as English numbers? And also, if Nia can't understand English numbers at this point, then why the hell is the 18 on her cab an English-looking 18 and not an African 18? And besides, aren't those same English numbers the same ones Swahili people learn? They just say them differently? Look, I try my best to research this stuff, people. I don't exactly know everything about... You know. And it's not just her A team that bothers me about her design. It's not the fact that they made her a standard gauge engine when her real life basis is narrow gauge. It's her paintwork. She had been given all of these African patterns along her boiler just to push the diversity angle with Nia. This paintwork was fine when she was in Africa, but why couldn't they repaint her to look more subtle and fit in with the other Sodor engines? Keep her orange, but give her red or yellow stripes instead of these patterns. Give her a brass nameplate, a more sensible looking 18, or any other number. Write NWR on her boiler. And there's also the fact that she, and many others, keep mentioning the fact that she's from Kenya, instead of going along with this cleverness persona, or making her learn new things about the country she's in. There are other ways of including diversity than just mentioning the country she's from. They have done this before with other characters, like Hero, Victor, and even Hank in Season 12. They don't usually mention Japan or Cuba, unless it's important to the story, like in Snow Place Like Hope, Helping Hero, Blue Mountain Mystery, and Hero of the Rails. But they aren't bland because of the lack of references, they have really unique and great characters to compensate for it. Hero is really strong, hardworking, and very kind. Victor always wants to help his friends in any way he can. And even Hank has a character outside of just being American. He always wants to help little engines with their heavy trains if they're struggling, showing that he worries and cares about them. Now, I occasionally collaborate with or talk to people from different countries, Wales, America, Australia, even China. 
but every time I talk to them, I don't say, Hello, Liz of America. Hello, Claude of Australia. Hello, Yilin of China. I talk to them like I talk to normal people. I'm sure the production team talks the same way to Yvonne Grandi, Nia's voice actress. I mean no offense to anyone when I'm saying all of this. I'm saying that this is a problem with the character she voices, not her. Getting back on track, I have problems with all of the other changes they've made, but I'll save my rants on them until tomorrow's video, because I've already talked for long enough here. So let's just move on to the episodes I didn't like. And oh boy, there are a lot of them this time. But I'll only address the Sodo episodes. You all know I don't like the international ones. So here we go. Forever and ever, my aforementioned problems with Nia leaving Africa. Again, the moral is not a bad one. It's Nia's reasoning for leaving that ruins it. Or lack thereof. Honestly, I don't blame Gordon for getting upset over Henry's departure. It was so rushed and so out of nowhere from when you're going from season to season for the first time that his reaction is really appropriate. What? 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 <laughs> when did this happen? Nobody told me! But then his ranting goes way too far. He doesn't look like Gordon anymore. He's acting like a whiny, nitpicky child. It almost feels as if Gordon's whining, questions about Edward, grumpiness, and childish breakdown was the producers acknowledging the fandom's reaction to all of the big changes to the show, especially about Edward and Henry leaving. I don't want change! I don't want change! Everything has to stay the same! Okay, does the show staff like the fan base, or do they hate them? At this point in the show, it's easy to assume the latter. Seeing is believing. I kinda like the first half of the episode, Merlin's reintroduction, Rebecca's reaction, and the scene setting up Trevor's new whistle, but it's the other half that bothers me. It feels unfinished. <laughs> Did you hear that too? Yes, I did. It sounds like- Merlin the Invisible Engine! Wait until I tell Thomas! You have never seen this engine before. How did you think the Invisible Engine wasn't him? And then the episode just suddenly ends. There's no proper closure on Merlin, Percy never properly sees him, Thomas never actually tells Percy about Merlin. It just stops. This episode would have had a more satisfying ending if it had nine minutes to tell his story instead of seven. The case of the puzzling parts. Sydney's forgetfulness in Sydney Sings was charming and pretty enjoyable honestly, but his forgetfulness here was just sour. I know that he is more forgetful than usual here because of Diesel. Great job failing to keep your promise to change your ways, you dick. But Paxton having to remind him of obvious things and teaching him stuff about mysteries makes this episode push this new series into the educational Nick Jr. show property. But even then, even Blue's Clues does mysteries better than this. And I hate mysteries that conclude that the one they are looking for was right there at the very beginning the whole time. Which would make this whole mystery and the episode itself pointless. What is it with this era spending all of its money making dozens of pointless episodes? Rosie is red. Dear fucking lord, this episode was cringy. It was bad enough when the show staff were representing the fan base in Forever and Ever. Now they feel like acknowledging the people who ship certain characters in the show. And yes, shippers exist even in this fan base. And I have no idea why. I don't know what kind of shipping they like between these engines, because... Well, 
their lips can't reach. I know some people will tell me, well, the engines can emote joy, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, and other emotions, so why not love? Well, love or romance has never been established between any of the engines, ever. It was never, ever, ever used on the engines once in the 72 years before this episode. They keep saying that Thomas and Rosie are just friends, exclamation mark. But this episode is flashing romantic implications the entire time. I do like you a lot, but no more than any of the other engines. Rosie and I were both glad to be good friends. Just good friends. To me, this looks like this is insulting shippers in the fan base, especially since Thomas X Rosie is a really popular bond in this fandom ever since season 10. But aside from that, Thomas is pretty unlikable after that scene at the docks. He knows he stood up to Rosie, but he seriously let Bill and Ben's childish thoughts get into his head? You'd think Thomas would know better than to listen to what they or Diesel would say. I don't blame Rosie for being cross with him here. I was beginning to think this was the worst episode of this season, but then... I soon remembered my real most hated episode of season 22, and this opinion had stuck with me ever since it first aired in 2018. Apology Impossible. This episode is unbearable. This is the episode that made me hate James. Not just in this episode, but for the rest of the series. He was showing signs of going downhill in season 21, ever since Rob Rackstraw took over from Keith Wickham. For some reason. Maybe Keith wanted a bit of a break. But this episode took it way too far. James is an unlikable, complete, selfish, blind, unlikable, unkind douche sack in this episode. I mean, my god, he is completely unlikable. As soon as he bumps into the box truck too hard, in the first 10 seconds, he is being a deliberate douchebag. He knows Philip. He is harmless. He is lovable. Hell, Philip fucking saved him from a severe crash. And yet he keeps pushing him around, thinking he is talking about the wrong things, and all that he cares about is his fucking paintwork. Even when there's a single tiny dot of oil on his buffers, he zips off to the washdown. Does he not remember when caring too much about his paintwork got him into a problem? Oh, and the stuff on the bridge was destroying his character too. I... I get it. James is usually vain, boastful, and wants to be famous and splendid and stuff. But in the Ark Productions era, there have been at least three occasions where all of that can lead him into trouble. Pouty James, all in vain, and especially the fastest red engine on Sodor. And it looked as though he actually learned his mistake from the next episode canonically, an engine of many colors showing that he might be able to improve himself at last. But he never truly remembers the lessons he has learned from any of those episodes. He is still vain. He is still boastful. But he has now taken it way too far in the wrong direction. Every single bit of dialogue from every episode after this one is Here's James! Or mentioning his paintwork. Even when he does eventually apologize at the very end, it doesn't sound as if he is saying it properly. To the other engines, I mean. This episode can burn in hell for making me despise a character I originally thought was alright. Fuck. This. Episode. <sighs> 
Let's just talk about the songs quick before I get a heart attack. They changed the main theme song of the show, on top of every single other thing they have changed. And if you remember my season 21 video yesterday, does this new song sound familiar? Let's go, go, go on a big world adventure. Let's go, go, go explore with Thomas and his friends. They were really so fucking lazy that they decided to redo last year's song instead of making something completely original. And this new theme song perfectly highlights the problems with the episode you're about to watch. There is way too much happening on screen, the visuals are too wacky, and it is way too fast for the kids to enjoy. This is evident in the first five seconds. <laughs> Do you think five-year-olds will be able to process all of that, that quickly? James, Percy, Nia, Gordon, Rebecca, Emily, Edward, Henry, Doc, Annie, Clarabelle, Paxton, Sydney, Rosie, Bill, Ben, Diesel, Phillips, Salty, Porter, Cranky, Collie, Samson, Bradford, Merlin, Trevor, Dexter, Harvey, Marion, Belle, Daisy, Rocky, Hannah, Victor, Kevin, Gator, Stanley, Hank, Hero, Freddy, Lexi, Caroline, Smarter, Boulder, Thomas, number one! Slow. The. Fuck. Down. Although the old hit era theme song remix from seasons 19 to 21 is still in the Blob era, they updated that song as well to replace Edward and Henry with Nia and Rebecca. They really want to wipe these two greats from existence, don't they? And I have questions about this re-edit too. This show never ever slows down, doesn't it? Yellow and green, red, orange and blue. That ruins the beat of the song. Why not change it to all in different colors too? They're the really useful crew. I came up with that in just three minutes. Thomas! He's the cheeky one. Rebecca! She's new and lots of fun. If this show were to go on for... 10 more seasons. She isn't going to be new anymore. Better lyrics. Rebecca. She's kind and lots of fun. Emily. Emily knows her stuff. Jay. Is always showing off. That doesn't even rhyme. Nia. Wants to help and share. Toby. Well, let's say he's square. Toby? They really kept the Toby lyric in here? I don't remember seeing Toby in the Boba era. I think he has less roles in this era than even Edward and Henry do. And yet he is still in the theme song? Since they had used more of Edward this season, I think the final two lyrics should have been Edward wants to help and share. Nia does her work with care. Why am I able to come up with better lyrics for this than the executives that are twice my age and have more experience than me? And since half the episodes this season don't feature the Steam Team, there is actually a different song to close out the international episodes. The journey never ends. It's actually... Not that bad, really. The beat is nice, the singing is alright, the music sounds pretty African, which is fitting, and the lyrics are pretty good. Although, I feel like I should mention these lyrics. We'll go to China, Australia, Spain, Peru. Yeah! Kenya, Mexico. We'll go to India, Poland, Germany, too. of the 16 countries mentioned, Thomas only goes to 5 of them in the show. 7 if you include the movie. How long did they think this new series was gonna go on for? Next up is All the Girls Around the World, and as you would have predicted from the title, it's the Girl Power song. Hell, even the singer is female, which I think is a first for the series. I... I don't know what to make of this song. 
It sounds really nice. It reminds me of those girl pop group songs from the 2000s. But considering how controversial Nia and Rebecca's inclusions are, I have this feeling that this lyric of Now the time is ours is... I'm not saying this is a bad thing to say. Women should get more attention and praise as males. But... Um... Uh... The next song is The Steam Team. It's pretty bland and forgettable, honestly. Besides, we already have one song about the Steam Team at the end of every Soto episode. I don't see why we need a different one. And the last song released during this season is Let's Dream. It was solely made just to compile all of their wacky, pointless fantasy sequences from the episodes into a music video. And the song itself, I like that it goes for a more relaxing sort of tone, like it's helping you dream, but it's still a song that I'm going to forget about the next morning. Oh dear lord. You all knew at the very beginning of this marathon that I was going to spend much longer than necessary talking about this season, didn't you? But could you blame me? This season changes so many things about the series and does so many of those changes wrong that I had to make this one the longest Tom Toba video. Beside from the last one, they took Thomas all around the world, but made the episodes pointless to rewatch. They added more girl characters to the main cast, but they didn't give them much character or story potential. They put in wacky, fast-paced visuals to entertain the kids, but most of it is just big blobs of filler. Not to mention, most of the stories are basic and nitrogen era E. The animation had been downgraded since the last season, the characters had been completely butchered in some cases, and it's all just really painful to watch. I don't know about the children they were aiming for, but to a lifelong fan like me and many others who had loved the show ever since I was a brainless three-year-old, S-H-I-T-E. Absolute shite. Will season 23 make any improvements? Will it be just as bad as this season? Or will it be worse? I'm scared to find out. But tomorrow, I must. Oh my God.